Betsy Who Cried Wolf Written by Gail Carson Levine and illustrated by Scott Nash On her eighth birthday, Betsy took the shepherd's oath. She was going to be the best shepherd in Bray Valley history, and any wolf who tried to eat her sheep had better watch out. That night, while Betsy slept in her bedroom above her mom's bakery, Zimmo howled on Rosenrise Mountain. Ho, ho, ho! He was hungry. Boo, ho, ho! He was lonely. The sheep were always guarded, and he was the last wolf on the mountain. He needed a plan. He thought, um, hmm, um, he howled. Hey, he, he had it, a plan to trick the shepherds and the farmers. It wouldn't make him less lonely, but he'd get to eat the sheep. He howled merrily. Trilly, trilly. Early the next morning, Betsy packed her lunch pail with two helpings of mom's pies. Then she led the sheep up Rosenrise. When they got there, she scanned the slope to her left. No wolves. She scanned to her right. No wolves, but a ewe was trying to jump into Soaking Wet's river. Bessie drove her back and then scanned straight ahead. No wolves. All right. Hidden in a thicket halfway up the mountain, Zimmo watched Betsy. She looked tough, but he'd fool her anyway. Betsy scanned to the left again. Zimmo stepped out of the thicket. Was it a wolf? Betsy reviewed her wolf checklist. Long snout? Check. Bushy tail? Check. Hungry eyes? Check. Sharp teeth? Check. Oh, Miss Shepherdess, we have company. Too skinny to be a wolf. It's a dog. Bah. He's wearing a woolen muffler. It was a wolf. Betsy blew her wolf whistle and cried, Wolf! Exactly as she'd been taught in shepherd school. Every farmer in Bray pounded up to the pasture. Zimmo slipped into his thicket and watched. Those farmers would scare an ordinary wolf. But not Zimmo. Not a hungry wolf with a plan. Where's the wolf? Farmer Wolseley shouted. Betsy pointed. There! But the wolf had vanished. Safe in his hiding place, Zimmo chuckled and his stomach rumbled. Farmer Wolseley scowled. Are we going to lose this whole flock again, Betsy? Long ago, Bray Valley had lost its sheep because of a mischievous shepherd. Should we send you back to shepherd school? He thundered. No, sir, there was a wolf. Farmer Wolseley just shook his head and started back to his fields. All the farmers shook their heads and followed him. None of them believed Betsy. Zimmo almost felt sorry for Betsy. It wasn't her fault she was up against a hungry, lonely wolf with a plan. Betsy went back to work. Scan right, no wolves. Scan left, no wolves. Scan straight ahead, no wolves. All right, time for lunch. Betsy reached into her lunch pail. She'd protect the sheep, no matter what. She'd show those farmers. Zimmo waited. Let her eat in peace, he thought. He scratched a flea and then ate it. Some lunch for a wolf. Betsy finished her rhubarb pie. Scan right. That wolf again! Wolf! Zimmo felt bad about tricking Betsy, so he howled. Hoo, hoo, hoo. She had him now. She blew her whistle. She hollered. Wolf! Wolf! When she turned to look for the farmers, Zimmo tiptoed away, feeling like a skunk. But he had to follow the plan. A wolf had to eat. Only half as many farmers came this time. Not one saw even a hair of a wolf. Farmer Wolseley took away Betsy's whistle and sent her back to shepherd school. We're disappointed in you, Betsy. You've let us down. This is your last chance. Bah, let's go, I'm starving. The next morning, Farmer Woolsey let Betsy have the flock again, but he said it was her last chance. 
When she reached the pasture, she scanned right. No wolves. She scanned left. That wolf again! But this time, he was... Bearing his fangs! Galloping down the mountain toward the sheep! Betsy blew her whistle. She cried, wolf, wolf! She turned to look down the slope. Nobody was coming. She had to stop the wolf herself. Betsy spun around to watch him. Her foot knocked into her lunch pail and her pie helpings tumbled out. Zimmo stopped short and sniffed. Yum, the sheep smelled just like wool, but those pies smelled delicious. He took a step toward them. My, he was skinny, Betsy thought. Poor wolf, he was starving. Still, she had a job to do. She picked up her tin plate of shepherd's pie to hurl at him. Zimmo sat on his haunches and howled. A tear trickled down his cheek. Food! Food! He has a lovely voice. Watch out, doggy! Betsy lowered her arm. So far, he hadn't hurt the sheep. If he wanted her lunch, she could have it. She put the plate down and stepped back. Help yourself. Yum! Zimmo rushed at the two big helpings of pie. Betsy watched. For a second, she thought about petting him. But a shepherd couldn't pet a wolf. Zimmo wolfed down Betsy's lunch and licked the plate clean. He felt much better now, so he wagged his tail and trotted away. Halfway up Rosenrise, Zimmo hid behind a tree and watched Betsy. A ewe had gotten stuck to a bramble bush and she was pulling the brambles out one by one. What a fine shepherd she was. But, uh-oh, those lambs over there were too close to the cliff. Look, shepherd, look! But she was too busy, and the lambs... Zimmo had to save them. He bounded down the mountain, growling and snarling. Betsy whirled around. That wolf, charging at the sheep, and she didn't have any more lunch to give him. She picked up a stone, but she didn't throw it because he was chasing the lambs back to the flock. He was hurting them. He was great at it, too. For the rest of the day, Zimmo helped Betsy with the herding. When the sheep didn't need them, Betsy petted Zimmo and he taught her how to howl. Then they sang together. Trilla, trilly, ha, ha, hoo. That night, Betsy took Zimmo home to eat chicken pot pie and sleep in her room over her mom's bakery. In the morning, Farmer Woolsley and the other farmers apologized to Betsy. Next, Zimmo howled the shepherd's oath. Keep sheep safe. From then on, Betsy and Zimmo herded together and ate mom's pies together, the two shepherds of Bray. You know, there's a moral in this somewhere. Someone should write a book about these two.